Dashing is a mechanic that a lot of combat games have and it certainly makes your combat a lot more dynamic. I've seen a lot of people attempt to make dash systems, most of them being starters or somewhat of starter scriptures and their dashes do work but I think they're just missing a small little detail to their dashes. That detail being smoothing the force of the dash as the dash gets closer and closer to the end. With this, I ain't trying to sound smarter than anyone or anything. I got a lot of things to improve on myself. What I want to accomplish with this video is just show you how to add that smoothing effect to the dashes. Or if you're someone new to scripting, then I guess my goal would be to get you to learn how to make dashes in general. By the way, the place in this video containing all the scripts will be downloadable in the description. So if you want to go in yourself to study the code or mess around and whatnot, you can get it from the description. I promise it's not a virus. Probably. Now I'm playing fam. So yeah, this is gonna be another video tutorial since that's what you and the rest of the people from the videos have proven to like the most. And I'm here for the people. I got y'all. Alright, so we're here in studio now and we're gonna be doing two separate scripts. This is the first one. Also, make sure that this first script is stored in starter character scripts. I named this first script input manager. Also, you're gonna want to create a bindable function inside the script and you're gonna put another local script called dash inside the bindable function. If you don't know what a bindable function is, it's just something we use to connect two or more scripts of the same type. So server script to server script or local script to local script. Now onto the first script, the input manager essentially. Or we're gonna do in this first script is input detection which just means we'll be checking to see if the player pressed the key to perform the dash action we will be using q for that first thing you want to do is create two variables you get the user input service which will let you check when a player presses a certain key and also which keys are being pressed then you get the dash bindable function we're gonna need that for later then we use the input began function with this user input service and connect it to a function you should already know this but in case you didn't know this comes with two arguments the key that was pressed which I called input and the argument game processed, which is mainly used to see if the player is not typing in chat or something like that. I'm not gonna go more into detail into how this works. If you don't know how this works, just go watch a video tutorial on it. I'm sorry. Once you make sure that the player is not typing in chat, you set up the key you want players to use. In this case, it's Q. Now here starts the important part. We need to identify the direction of the dash. The easiest way to do this is by just checking what key the user is pressing. There are other more complex ways, but I don't really go into that in this video, but if you want me to cover them let me know and i'll make a sequel to this video or something so you create a variable called dash direction which we will change depending on what key is being pressed how do we know what key is being pressed you may be asking we use ifs with user input service colon is key down and in the parentheses you put the key you're trying to check for so you're gonna create this different ifs one for the a key one for the s key and one for the d key and you might be wondering why isn't there a check for the w key well that's because by default we're making the variable store the direction front and that's the direction that's supposed to be assigned to the w key so if you're not pressing a s or d then it's just gonna go for the front direction this also means that if you're not pressing any key it will automatically perform form a front dash. Make sure to change the variable value according to the key. A is left, S is back, and D is right. Once this is done, we're gonna invoke the dash bindable function and pass the variable dash direction as an argument. This is meant to connect this script with our other script. Go ahead and open that one now. And this is where the real magic happens. This is what I actually want you to take away from this video. First thing you're gonna do is get the dash bindable function. Then you get the local player. Through that you get the character. And through that you get the humanoid and the humanoid root part. And through the human you get the animator in case you want to add animations i'm not gonna add any but you might so i just put that in there and then these next two variables are very important you're gonna create a variable to tell the script how long dash will be i called it dash duration and also you're gonna want to create a variable to tell the script how often will he be checking to update the direction of the dash because we're aiming to make that battleground type dash that updates if you move your camera and all that once you have all that set up you receive the invoke from our previous script don't forget to get the direction argument. Inside this, we're gonna start by creating a body velocity. Whoa, 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 body velocity is there per creator. Shut your you use instance.new, set the max force to this right here. You want the y axis to be zero if you want the dash to be affected by gravity. So you make that zero. You may be wondering why I set the others to 100k. Well, simply put, if you put this too high, then if your character dashes into a wall, your character will fling or fall to the floor, and we don't want that. So, unless you know what you're doing, just set it to 100k. Also, parent the body velocity to the human root part. The next four variables are also very, very important. Dash strength is essentially how fast the player will dash. Minimum dash strength, 
is the lowest the dash strength variable can go, meaning the slowest the dash will be able to get. I recommend you to multiply this by 0 point something. This essentially means that it won't go any lower than 15% of the original speed. It'll all make sense in a bit, just bear with me. Then we have amount of iterations. Since we're going to be using a for loop to smooth out the end speed of the dash, we want to know in how many iterations the dash will be performed. And this is how you get it. Dash duration divided by rate the two variables we set at the beginning of the script. And then the last one here is removal of strength per iteration, which will be how much speed we will be taking away from the dash on each iteration. Ideally, you want to take away the same on each iteration while also taking into account the duration of the dash. So you do dash strength divided by amount of iterations. If you set up the previous four variables correctly, the rest should be a lot easier. We're going to use a for loop that starts at zero and every iteration, we're going to increment it by the rate variable. This will make sure that the update of the direction occurs evenly throughout the duration of the dash. And now we're going to update the direction of the dash according to the direction the dash started in. We're going to have one if with three else ifs, one for each direction. And what this is meant to do is it's going to change the direction of the dash according to the orientation of the character, which will change when we move our comma around, right? We'll be modifying the velocity property of the butter velocity on every single if according to the direction. To push the character forward, you want to do human or root part dot C frame dot look vector. And that gets the front direction of the character. And then you multiply this by the dash strength. And this tells it how fast the dash should be. If we want him to dash backwards, then you just multiply the direction by minus one. And of course, times it by the dash strength. If we want him to go right, it's pretty much the same as before. But instead of using C frame dot front vector, we use C frame dot right vector which will get the direction of where the right face of the human root part is looking. And for left, the same as before, you just times the direction by minus one. And this makes your dash update when you move your camera around, as long as you have shift lock on, that is. There is a way to get it to work even without shift lock, but that's for another video. Now that we've made it update its direction, now we're gonna make it so it kinda smooths out the speed of the dashes as it progresses. And that's what this next part is. We do if dash strength is greater than minimum dash strength, then you subtract what it's meant to subtract from the dash strength on each iteration. That's why we needed to set up those variables previously. But also a very important thing I did was tell it if dash strength is smaller than the minimum dash strength for whatever reason, then make the dash strength equal to the minimum dash strength. This ensures that the limit of the minimum dash strength is actually fulfilled because sometimes when it last subtracts it, it goes a little bit under the minimum. If you want to be precise, you need that last if. Another very important thing is to make the script wait the rate before moving on to the next iteration. Otherwise, your dash won't work. And with this, it's going to smooth out as the dash progresses. And lastly, we destroy the body velocity once we're outside the loop so that we don't just infinitely dash. And now we test to see if we got it right. I recommend you to test in the actual game and not in studio because in studio, the dash might last a bit longer. I'm guessing that has to do with your computer speed, but don't worry about that. Just test it in the actual Roblox game and not in studio. And as you can see, we got our dash that updates and smooths out as the dash progresses, just like Battlegrounds have it. God damn, that was a lot to go through. But I hope this helped, bro. We got a Discord server, so if you want to interact with other cool devs, link in the description, you know what to do. And all of this said, keep leveling up, bro. Be safe, and I'll see you when I see you. Peace.